Hi, I'm Norin, and I love this. Today we will be looking at night two of our Cards Against Humanity's Eight Sensible Gifts for Hanukkah. Uh, last night we did night three, and then night two showed up today. So, days one and three were both Hanukkah socks. I have a sneaking suspicion that I know what is in this envelope. But that said, let's go ahead and crack it open and find out. It's one pair of socks! It's totally the Hanukkah present that I wanted. How did they know? All right, much like days one and three, we've got a pair of socks here with a menorah, two candles lit for the second night. Uh, what's our quote today? You can never have too many socks. Mahatma Gandhi. That is a fine quote. All right. And as always, our letter. Let's see what we've got today. On simplicity. Simplicity has been a powerful concept for a long time, and for just as long, difficult to pin down. Everyone seeks it, from artists and scientists to religious figures, philosophers, designers, and inventors. Sir Isaac Newton argued that nature is pleased with simplicity. Henry David Thoreau wrote that he and we needed to simplify. The 13th century poet and Zen master Stonehouse astutely observed that there isn't much time in this fleeting life. Why spend it running in circles? Steve Jobs sought simplicity and Pope Francis tries to embody it. Simplicity, however, is not simple. It is almost, but not quite, whatever we want and need it to be. In the affluent world in which some of us live, it is about reducing clutter, removing the that the extraneous in order to get to whatever is important, about slowing down, doing one thing at a time, and finding the world in that one thing, about paring down, learning to want and need less materially. Yet many people now, especially young adults, have no choice but to simplify, making a virtue of necessity, living simply as much because they have to as because they want to. For some, simplicity serves as a rebuke to the gross inequalities in our own society. The idea and ideal of simplicity is strengthened by its tie to many others. It is implicit in the idea of craftsmanship, practice, and mastery, doing things carefully and doing them right away. For some scientists and designers, simplicity is about persimony or elegance, as landscaped architect Koichi Kawana put it, the achievement of maximum effect with minimal means. Simplicity is evoked in the life ideal of balance and is at the heart of the political ideal of social justice. When we seek quiet or clarity, we are often seeking simplicity as well. As we struggle for self-acceptance, embracing our own distinct narrative, we are also seeking a form of simplicity. I, su blah. <clears throat> I too seek and practice simplicity in my own life, especially in how I compose my daily life in order to free personal resources to attend to what is important and to the unexpected. And so I also have to choose what is important. My family, of course, their health and well-being, their own efforts to grow, contribute, and find a measure of happiness, my writing, which is how I seek to make meaning of life and contribute in a modest way to my society, and my students, who are finding their way, working on their own personal and professional tasks. Yet I have to say that I also wonder about simplicity. I believe it is important to embrace complexity and ambiguity as part of life. I worry that simplicity is a luxury of those who can afford to simplify. Simplicity seems to require a kind of withdrawal from social or civic life, or the messiness of the world at large, even to require a measure of selfishness. Certainly, relationships with those we love and care about are not, and cannot be, simple. I think what I seek may be sufficiency rather than simplicity. Dear reader, go figure. Enjoy your holidays, put on your white socks, and worry about the hard stuff next year. All right, Eli's dad was the writer of today's letter. <clears throat>
Once again, there are probably a few clues in there for the metagame. Uh, and a lovely pair of socks, a third pair of socks. Uh, I'm a large fellow and these are teeny tiny little socks, so I've not decided what we're to do with them, but hey, if they're gonna send me eight pairs, we will find a use for them. And you on Nerd Team 30 will probably see that use. All right, that has been night two of the Eight Sensible Gifts for Hanukkah. Thank you for joining us this time, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. This has been Norin with another episode of I Love This. Make sure to tune in next time, leave your comments or suggestions below, and if you like what you see, be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and share buttons. Until next time.